Welcome to episode 29 of SpaceX in the News. My name's Kevin, and today we're going to debrief the recent Starlink 1 mission that happened a couple days ago. Then we'll head on over to Boca Chica, Texas and take a look at Starhopper as well as Starship. And then we'll kind of sidestep over to Cocoa, Florida and take a look at the progress on their Starship. We'll get all legalistic with SpaceX's recent lawsuit against the U.S. government. Again, then we'll wrap this episode up with today's honorable mention. Let's get started. All right, so on Thursday night, SpaceX launched their Starlink 1 mission from Cape Canaveral, Florida. And in case you missed it, this was a very special launch for several different reasons. For starters, this was the third flight for the booster that once again landed safely on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You, giving SpaceX yet another hat trick. But not only that, both halves of the fairings were successfully fished out of the ocean after splashdown. And to top it all off, this was the heaviest payload that SpaceX has ever lifted off the launch pad to date the first 60 SpaceX Constellation satellites, weighing in at about 500 pounds each. And it was a pleasant surprise to most people that all 60 satellites deployed successfully and deployed their single solar array panels. SpaceX's Constellation project is an initiative to encircle the Earth with satellites, link them like a giant net, and provide cheap and high-speed internet to most of the world. Again, this launch was just the first 60 satellites, but over the next several years, the company will be putting up about 12,000 in total. However, it doesn't require all 12,000 satellites to get the constellation up and running. The minimum number required, according to Elon Musk, is about 400 satellites in orbit in order to start selling services, but about 800 satellites would be required for significant service. Elon says that connectivity could probably happen later this year or early next year. Each satellite will have about one terabit of functional bandwidth or enough to stream 4K video to about 1,100 people at once. I covered this launch live on my webcast and it was really neat to see these satellites deploy by being thrown from the second stage as it toppled end over end. Now, since the inception of this project, a lot of people have been concerned about the amount of space junk that this will create. SpaceX has always been really good stewards of low Earth orbit. They tend to deorbit their second stage after it's finished putting the payload into orbit. They plan on using a version of Starship one day as a space junk collector, but Elon just tweeted the other day that it's easy to turn one of their Starlink satellites into a debris collector. And the Starlink satellites themselves are designed to disintegrate upon reentry. But since I just mentioned Starship, we're gonna head over to Boca Chica, Texas right now and check out the recent update that's going on with that vehicle. At the moment, Starhopper is still currently engineless, but that's supposed to change any time now since it's been confirmed that it's gonna be making its first official hops untethered here in about the next week. These hops are gonna be an awesome show and is a great way to start the summer. And to help counter the stresses that the ship's about to endure, Starhopper recently got new shoes put on its legs. Now moving over to the Starship that's just next door down there in Boca Chica, it seems like things are getting done at a rapid pace now that they're officially in competition with the Coca Florida team. But this might not necessarily be a good thing. According to some of the locals, and this picture taken by my good buddy John Randolph, it definitely seems like things might have been rushed a little too fast. The measurements for the nose cone may not have been taken as accurately as they should have. But things are also progressing for the bottom part of Starship as well. They got the aft section propped up on a concrete slab with an access port to install the Raptor engines. And the site itself continues to be a recipient of upgrades as well. Do you remember that big concrete slab? Well, a structure has been constructed upon it, and it is now nearing completion. And while it's not big enough to be a hangar for the Super Heavy booster, it is a spitting image of the warehouse in Cocoa, Florida that's used to build smaller subsections of the Starship. And speaking of the Cocoa, Florida site, I don't have any real updates for you. However, I do have a few pictures by Michael Seeley here, and they do show some progress with the stacking of the vehicle. And between you and me, it looks a little bit cleaner than the one down there in Boca Chica. Oh, listen to me stir that pot. Oh, I'm gonna stir that pot. Hey, I gotta rile people's feathers. That way they really get into the competition. It's a win-win for everyone, but especially me. You know I love you, Boca Chica. But while we're still on the subject of Starship, let me rapid fire through some of these tweets that Elon Musk shared with us the other day. He does this from time to time. He'll go on these Twitter rampages, and it's always fun and exciting when he does it. Reagan Beck asked, when do you expect production on Raptors to begin ramping up in Hawthorne? What's the status at this point? Elon said about to complete SN5, which is their fifth Raptor engine, ramping to an engine every three days this summer. When will multi-stage test vehicles begin construction? Will a super heavy engine section be test fired this year? And Elon replied the ships at Boca Chica and Coco will fly with at least three engines, maybe all six. And the real Starship itself has undergone some major changes once again. Now it's back down to three sea level optimized Raptor engines and three vacuum optimized Raptors with big nozzles. This is one less Raptor engine than the seven it was previously designed to have. And to be more specific, the outer engines will have much larger nozzles fixed to the airframe, while the inner engines will have high gimbal range, about 15 degrees. Those inner engines being the sea level engines. Vacuum nozzle engines are used only in near vacuum conditions, while sea level engines need to gimbal rapidly and at a high angle for landings. Larger nozzles leave less room to move and increases moment of inertia. 
Now the previous seven that Starship was designed to have were all sea level engines. So it was asked of Elon when he expects the vacuum optimized Raptor engines to begin testing. And he replied hopefully about four months from now. Elon said this configuration should be able to put 150 tons in a low earth orbit for a fully reusable configuration but at least 100 tons allowing for mass growth. What about Super Heavy? What's going on with that? Well, we already knew that the first version of Super Heavy wouldn't have the full 31 engines just because you don't wanna lose all those in case something goes wrong. But Elon did narrow that number down for us to about 20 engines. But here's a good question asked by Malcolm Head. When is Super Heavy going to start construction? And Elon says about three months from now. And how exactly does Elon plan on shipping the Super Heavy booster that 15 to 20 miles from Cocoa, Florida to Cape Canaveral? Just one word, horizontally. Oh, and this tweet right here doesn't have anything to do with Starship and Super Heavy, but we might as well mention it. Elon was asked what his thoughts were on those anneal structures that Jeff Bezos recently talked about at his last speech. <laughs> and his reply was, makes no sense. In order to grow the colony, you'd have to transport vast amounts of mass from planets, moons, asteroids, would be like trying to build the USA in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. All right, now let's move on to the lawsuit that SpaceX recently filed against the US government. Now, technically this was called a bid protest complaint and SpaceX had it sealed restricting access to additional case details for the time being. But what we do know from the redacted version is that SpaceX is mad that the Air Force wrongly awarded billions to rocket competitors like Blue Origin and ULA. According to the CNBC article, the full SpaceX complaint alleges that the Air Force's Space and Missile System Center wrongly awarded the funds to a portfolio of three unproven rockets based on unstated metrics. These awards granted 500 million to Blue Origin for its new Glenn rocket, 792 million to Northrop Grumman for its Omega rocket, and 967 million to ULA for the Vulcan Centaur rocket. Now all these rockets are not completely built yet. They are unproven, untested vehicles just like SpaceX's Starship. And the thing is, SpaceX bid on this contract with its Starship. But the Air Force, quote, determined that SpaceX's one development launch vehicle rendered the entire SpaceX portfolio a high risk. Now granted, we don't have all the information yet, but given what we do have, this definitely doesn't seem right at all. All these rockets by these companies are incomplete. They're still in development, but yet SpaceX's Starship was singled out. And as far as we know, it's further along in its testing than Blue Origin's new Glenn rocket. But at the same time, I remember reading in another article that the Air Force said that Elon Musk admitted that SpaceX's proposal, the way they put it together, wasn't exactly up to par, and that Elon said they missed the mark with it. But again, we, the general public, just don't have enough information right now to start throwing up our fists. All right, let's finish this video out with today's honorable mention. All right, I wanna make this very quick so I can get right to the point. Many of you already know that NASA's gonna put another rover on Mars in 2020 that looks just like Curiosity. But did you know that your name can go along for the ride? It can. All you have to do is go over to NASA's website and I'll pin the link in the comment section. And all you have to do is just register. It literally takes about three seconds. I mean, I did it for myself, but then I was like, oh, I have another three seconds. I can do it for my wife as well. So I did it and I took a screenshot of the, of the ticket and I sent it to her and she replied back, ha ha, weirdo. Well, that concludes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it to the end, let me know down in the comments. And a big shout out to my Patreon members who support this channel. If you want to support this channel and get extra content for it, go ahead and visit the description below and click on the link and uh, be part of the official family. All right, guys, I'm out. Godspeed.